Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about dynamic loft, how this is going to affect your launch angle, how this is going to affect your spin rates, the spin wedge, all that kind of stuff. And at first it seems a little bit confusing. We know, you know, for example here I have a 5 iron. Let's take a, a random loft of a 5 iron. I think uh, it should be somewhere around I believe 31 degrees or something. It depends on the set that you're going to use, um, but in that ballpark. So if I have this club shaft straight up and down, I have the, the, the club sitting flat on the ground, my loft that's coming out from the face, or the angle that's on this face is going to be roughly, let's say, 31 degrees for, for any given set. Now that's not necessarily the loft that I'm coming into contact. If you can imagine, you have a player that is flipping the club. So as they hit the ball, their hands are actually flipping and the club head, the club shaft is leaned back. Well, if this club shaft is leaned back, say, 5 degrees, all of a sudden that 31 degrees aloft turned into 36 degrees of loft at contact. So the dynamic loft, or the loft when you actually strike the ball, flight scope measures that just a, a millimeter, maybe even less than a millimeter before contact. That is, the dynamic loft is what is the loft on the face right before you make contact with the ball. In this example, that'd be 36 degrees of dynamic loft, even though there's 31 degrees on the club. Now, PGA Tour players are not launching the ball um, that high. They're not flipping the club and having the shaft leaning back like this. So we're going to have the shaft lean forward and it's going to be different depending on the club. Typically in the longer irons you're going to have a little bit more forward, a little bit less forward shaft lean. It's going to be closer to being vertical and your dynamic loft is going to be just slightly less than the normal loft on the club. Um, depends on the player, depends on the type of trajectory that they're going to hit the shot. As you get into the wedges, now we're coming in with a lot less dynamic loft. So for example, if I'm going to hit a little spinning, kind of uh, sweeping low draw spinning shot with a 56 degree wedge, the dynamic loft on my club at contact or just prior to contact is going to be closer to 40 degrees. So I'm actually taking 16 degrees of loft off the club. The dynamic loft is 40 instead of 56 is what it was normal. normally. Same thing happens with a driver. I can either raise or lower my dynamic loft and I'm going to hit the ball farther or I'm going to hit it less. So let's talk about the spin wedge and how dynamic loft plays into that and either gets you more or less spin. Scenario number one, let's talk about the driver. If you want to hit the ball far, let's say let's go to the extreme and do long drive. I want to be hitting with my angle of attack, meaning that my club is moving up into the ball about eight degrees, let's say. So my angle of attack with the driver, my head, the center of mass in my head is moving up eight degrees. That would look like an angle, you know, so let's, let's call it about like this. So the shaft is moving up at eight degrees. And I want to take as much dynamic loft off the driver as I can. Those guys are using five and six degrees drivers. So they're starting out with very little loft. And then they're, they're actually feeling like they're hooding it down a little bit. And if they can get around five degrees difference between their angle of attack, which was eight degrees, and maybe 13 degrees of loft on the face, but the driver face doesn't actually have, if you hit it off the top of the driver, it has more loft on it than it is in the center. So a five degree driver may really be 10 degrees. But if they can get this, you know, around 13 degrees of dynamic loft, then there's a very tight spin wedge in there. There's only five degrees difference between those two numbers, and their ball is gonna take off with very low spin, and it's still gonna have high launch because they're swinging up on the ball. So that's going to give them low spin. The lower the spin when you're swinging that hard, the farther the ball is going to fly. And obviously they want to launch it uh, nice and high also. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're trying to go, you know, with a launch angle of 16 or 17, which would be super, super high, then you'd have to tweak those numbers a little bit and get what you want. So I'm just kind of giving some random examples out there. I'm not saying that these are ideal numbers or anything like that. With a wedge, let's take that same scenario again. So now, with a wedge, I want to have an angle of attack pretty shallow with a wedge coming in if I'm going to get some good spin on it. I don't want to be chopping down into the ground. It's going to be nice and shallow. Let's, let's say a random number of a negative 4 degrees angle of attack. So we're just going to pick out negative 4. So that means my club's moving down negative 4. Here's level. Angle of attack is slightly down. Now, if I want to have some good spin on that, I need to have a pretty good angle close to about 47 degrees of a spin wedge. So I got a 56 degree wedge. I hit down on this at negative four. I believe I said negative four. What's the, my, my difference in the spin loft there is 56, considering that the loft on this club is 56, if I use the natural loft. 
and negative four. So I got 60 degrees spin wedge, the difference between loft on the face and angle of attack. Well, good players, PJ Tour players, are gonna de-loft this club to where it's almost de-lofted to um, say 40 degrees or 43 degrees, let's use for this example. And now my face angle is going up at 43. My angle of attack is down four and I've got that magic number of 47, which is gonna be pretty close to the maximum amount of spin I can get, depending on the conditions. It could be different from there. So in one scenario, I took dynamic loft. I felt like I, I, I took it off a little bit to get low spin. In the other scenario, with a wedge, I took dynamic loft off again to get high spin. So it all depends on what club we have and how we're using it and what's going to play on there. So again, for this sand wedge scenario, let's imagine again we're going down negative four. Instead of having that shaft leaned forward to 43 degrees, and now I got 43 degrees of loft coming off this face, let's imagine that I'm a, a scooper and I'm flipping the club, the club's passing in front of my hands. Well, now I'm turning this 56 degree wedge at contact, the dynamic loft is 60 degrees and the ball's rolling up the face and I'm not getting any spin there. It's gonna go nice and high. It's gonna look uh, like it's gonna stop on the green pretty well, but it just doesn't have the spin potential on it. So that's another scenario of how dynamic loft can change your trajectory and it can change your spin rates and all that kind of stuff. So um, the better we know dynamic loft, the better we know our spin rates and our numbers, the better we're gonna be able to help out our students. I'll go ahead and throw up a couple of numbers just so you guys have a pretty good idea of what ideal is or what PGA Tour averages are um, so that you can see what those are. And uh, good luck with your teaching, guys. If you guys are instructors out there, really try to memorize as much of these numbers as you can so you can help your students out and you'll really be seen as super knowledgeable. And if you guys are students, you wanna get a good feel for these, get on a radar so you can see your numbers, so we can see, am I launching the ball correctly to get the optimum spin and the most distance? Am I launching the ball? Do I have the right loft on there to get the maximum spin? Good luck to you guys. I'll see y'all soon. All right, so I want to show you a couple averages for the PGA Tour. Uh, we're seeing that the average driver loft is 9.2 degrees. That's, you know, if you just took the average of all the players that are on tour, um, I believe that's a 2014 or 2015 number. Sometimes the lofts go up or down based on you know, the current drivers, the hottest drivers for that year, if a lot of them are lower spinning, people will use a higher lofted driver uh, so they can launch it higher and it won't kick the spin up if, if drivers tend to spin more like they did back in, let's say the 90s um, or, or the early 2000s, they have to use a lower lofted driver. That's why you don't see a lot of seven degree drivers anymore. And another thing to keep in mind here is just because the loft on your driver says it's eight degrees, doesn't really mean that it's eight degrees. The bottom of the face is gonna be less loft. Uh, the, the middle is gonna be somewhere around normal and the top is gonna, to, cause it's a, a roll face, is gonna be higher loft. So usually your driver is actually gonna have a lot more loft on it than it says on the number on the bottom. Just because manufacturers don't wanna print 12 degree driver even if they know you're going to hit it far because they know people won't buy a 12 degree driver everybody thinks that better players play lower lofted drivers so nobody wants to go out and play a 12 degree when in reality um, pj there are some pj tour players that play 12 degree drivers um, but usually not as many just because of the high swing speeds and that kind of thing so anyways the dynamic loft or the loft that's actually at contact is going to be 12.8 degrees don't let this number fool you because it doesn't mean that they're actually flipping the club a few degrees past the hands. Again, the dynamic loft, or that's where they're actually contacting the ball. What's the loft on the face where they're contacting the ball? And if it's usually above the sweet spot, then it's gonna be a little bit higher. And usually the actual, this is measuring actual loft is gonna be a little bit higher. So for example, I play an eight degree driver that's several years old that I dislike, I hit it well, and it says eight on the bottom. Um, the actual loft on it, because I've had it measured with very precise machinery, is 9.8. So I'm basically playing a 10 degree lofted driver. If I was to get and hit a couple balls on the radar and I hit a little bit above center, it's going to read it at 11 or 12 degrees of dynamic loft of the actual loft when I'm contacting the ball. So it's a good thing to know. So know with a driver, longer irons, we're not getting as much forward shaft lean, especially with the irons, um, we're not going to get that 12 or 14 degrees forward shaft lean. Here we have a six iron. The average loft of the six iron is about 30 degrees. The six iron dynamic loft is 20.2. That's it. So that means the average tour pro out there is leaning the shaft forward, taking 9.8 degrees of loft 
off their six iron. If you go to pitching wedge, it's going to be even less than that. They're, they're de-lofting it even a little bit more. Or with a shorter wedge, one of those spinning wedge shots like we talked about, you could be de-lofting the wedge by you know 14 or 16 degrees um, to, to really get the spin on there and to get around that magic 47 degree spin wedge number. So this is just a couple recommendations to keep in mind. It's very difficult to find accurate statistics on dynamic loft. For some reason, they usually don't list it on there, which I think they should a lot more in articles and things that people post. So if you find, if you run across an article, it goes over PGA Tour averages, LPGA, average amateur averages, that gives a much bigger list through the bag. I would love to see those. Uh, go ahead and post a link in the comments below, and I think we'd all like to check that out. So good luck to you guys. That's a lot of information about dynamic loft. I hope you're starting to, to think about how this will play into your teaching and your own play. All right, so really good talking to you guys today. Whether you're a, an instructor out there, whether you're a player out there, and you'd like to learn a little bit more about top speed golf, maybe you'd like to pick up some distance in your own game, I got a great video that's gonna go over the number one lag mistake that I see most people making. So if you want more lag in your golf swing, you wanna be able to release that club with a lot of energy, then this is gonna be a great video for you. I'm gonna play a preview of that video in just one second. You just need to click the link that pops up in your screen or down below in the description if you're on a mobile device. That's going to allow you to get instant access to that video. And for those of you out there that are instructors, you want to see what the Top Speed Golf System is all about. I'm also including five videos that aren't going to cost you a dime that are going to go over the Top Speed Golf System. Talk about the five keys that really make a huge difference, the most difference in your game when it comes to accuracy, uh, consistency, length, those types of things. So I'm going to go over a lot of good information in there. And you guys have got instant access to that. So good luck to you guys. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Click the like button so I can keep these good videos coming your way. That really, really helps me out. I appreciate that. Thanks for you guys following these videos. Click the subscribe button. That way you'll see our newest videos. And I'll see you guys very soon. See you in the like video. Hi, guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard. And in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag. 